Good morning. Man, another beautiful spring day in Colorado. I know some of you thought spring had come. Then we get an inch of snow, but at least it didn't mess up the roads or anything. So that's really nice. I remember one year on uh, April the 13th when we lived in Florence and in our offices were down in Colorado Springs, we started in and it came a blizzard and we got three feet of snow on April the 13th and it was just something else. I remember one Mother's Day, I think that was May the 8th or something that we had uh, 18 inches of snow. So uh, anyway, welcome to Colorado. But overall, it's been really nice weather, hasn't it? It's been awesome. All right, I've been sharing on prosperity and there's just so much, you know, to share on it that we're just kind of hitting some of the highlights. But I've already shared a lot of foundational truths, basics, that you don't seek prosperity, you seek the Lord. Prosperity is a byproduct of relationship with the Lord. If you are seeking to get rich, 1 Timothy chapter 6, you pierce yourself through with many sorrows and hurtful lust, which drown men in perdition. And because of some scriptures like that and people see the negative effects of people who are seeking after riches, some people teach that you shouldn't have any and they call it, you know, in the King James, filthy lucre. <laughs> and... Uh, but there's nothing wrong with money. Money is not moral or immoral. All money does is amplify what's already in your heart. And if your heart is wrong, well then just getting money will just amplify the wrong that's in your heart. But if your heart is right, money will enable you to be a blessing. The Lord told Abraham, I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. You can't truly bless other people until you're blessed. And so anyway, I've been sharing that it is God's will for you to have prosperity. And uh, you ha it's an attitude. You have to believe that God wants you to prosper. A poverty attitude will stop the flow of God's blessing in your life. We've talked about how important it is to give. And um, man, anyway, there's a lot of things I'd still like to share. But let me turn over to... Uh, Luke 6, 38, and just use this passage. And I want to highlight just a portion of this verse. In verse 38, it says, Give and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom for with the same measure that ye meet with all it shall be measured to you again. And I want to emphasize the part right here that it says when you give that men shall give into your bosom. And I want to try and present something uh, during, you know, this brief time this morning that it's hard to get across to people, but prosperity isn't all spiritual. There is a, there is a physical, natural side to it. God is not going to counterfeit United States currency. He's not going to put money in your billfold. I actually heard a man on the radio one time that was selling green strings for 10 bucks. And if you will put this green string in your wallet, you'll never be without money. That is ungodly. And it's amazing. That guy probably made millions of dollars off of that. People dumb enough to do that. God's not going to counterfeit money. God's not going to create money. That's illegal. God doesn't do that. Did you know God doesn't have money? Some of you are shocked by that. He's got streets that are paved with gold. He's got things that are very valuable. His uh, gates are made out of one huge pearl. Must be an awesome oyster that produced that. But anyway, he's got, he's got assets, but he doesn't have money. He doesn't have United States currency. It says that when you give, men will give into your bosom. You put this together with Deuteronomy chapter 28. Let me just read a couple of these verses over here. This is the chapter of blessing that will come upon you. And of course, in the New Testament, we don't get these blessings based on our performance. We get it based on what Jesus has done for us. But in Deuteronomy chapter 28, the Lord shall command, this is verse eight, the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and all that thou settest thy hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God 
and all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods and the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy ground and the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto his land in his season. You know, you may not notice this, but he's not just going to rain money out of heaven. He's going to rain uh, rain out of heaven and he's going to water your crops. This is a natural means, something that you set your hand unto. And that's how God is going to bless you and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations and thou shalt not borrow. But notice up here in the ninth verse, it says he will bless you in your storehouses. Your storehouse is where you keep uh, things, food and things like that. You have to have a storehouse. And there's a lot of people that don't ever save anything. I think the equivalent for us would be that you need to have some money set aside. And did you know when you set money aside, God will bless it. You know, there's a man in Houston and I just forgot his name. Do you know his name that wrote that book about the storehouse principle? I think you've mentioned it. Anyway, he was a good friend of mine. I've ministered at his church. <laughs> But he wrote this book about the storehouse principle and he was reading this, this passage and the Lord spoke to him and says, I can't bless your storehouse because you don't have one. And you know what this guy did? He went and took $1 all he had and he opened up a savings account. And he says, you know, God can bless that a hundred times one is a hundred, but a hundred times zero is zero. So he started a savings account with just $1, all he could put in it. And when I was at his place, he owned probably, I'm not sure, but over a hundred acres. They had a camp there. They had a train on the place. They had buildings that would see two or 3,000 people that was paid for. And all of this started with him saying that I'm going to start a storehouse and God's going to bless it. So I put all of these things together. You give and men give into your bosom. God will bless the work of your hand. He will uh, take your storehouse and multiply it. He will cause rain to fall out of the heavens and water what you have done. But see, there's a balance between it being supernatural and yet natural at the same time. And I meet people all of the time that are just believing God for money and yet they don't have any vehicle, any way for God to get money to them. You need to be working a job is the minimum. Everybody needs to be working a job or you can get to a place to where you start taking money and you invest it and you have a storehouse and God bless it. And then you put your money to work for you. You can do it through investment and things like that. You can become an employer where you're employed and being a blessing to other people. But the minimum, the entry level is you need to get a job at least and start doing something and God will multiply what you set your hand unto. Look over in the 17th chapter of the book of Matthew and uh, it says in verse 20, uh, 24, and when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, doth not thy master pay tribute? He saith, yea, and when he was come unto the house, Jesus prevented him. In other words, Jesus knew what he was going to say. The Lord knew everything that had gone on, even though he hadn't told him. And he says, what thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the princes of this earth take uh, custom or tribute? Of, the, of their own children or of strangers? Peter said unto him, of strangers. Jesus saith unto them, then are the children free, notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go unto the sea and cast in a hook and take up the first the fish that first cometh up and when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and for thee. Well, that's amazing. But did you know that this combines the supernatural and the natural? God didn't create money, but he knew where money was and he knew that somehow or another this fish had eaten something that got money in his mouth and it was supernatural the way that uh, God led Peter to the fish, at, but it wasn't a creative miracle. And this is kind of an illustration of how it works. God will provide, but he's not going to provide directly from heaven. He's going to multiply what you do. And people that don't understand this get so spiritual that they're just sitting there waiting on God to supply 
Or you can get in a ditch on the other side and get to where you don't think that it's up to God. It's all up to you and you got to go out and you got to produce just through your own effort. But really the way you really prosper is when you start doing something, but wait for God to put his super on your natural. You know, we've got a person right now who uh, I'm associated with and they are believing God for, I think it's 40 something million dollars so that they can do something that is 100% good. I'm all for what they're doing. But did you know what? They don't minister to anybody. They minister to very, very few people. And for you to get, say, 42, $43 million from a little Bible study that you're holding or something like that, that's going to be a miracle, not a blessing. You know, those of you that are in first year, I'm teaching right now on the difference between blessings and miracles. And blessings are always more abundant and once they're given, they can't ever be taken away from you. And so blessings are the superior way, but it, in some ways it takes more effort to get a blessing because that means that you're gonna have to cooperate. You're gonna have to do it for certain things. You're gonna have to go out and plant your crops and then pray for good rain and for good weather and things like that. And you'll get a hundred percent return on it. Uh, so there's still super involved in it, but you gotta do something. And this uh, person that I'm thinking of, they honestly just don't have an opportunity or channel for God to give this money to them. And I'm going to say some things here about, you know, all of these facilities. Some people look at this and think, this is a miracle. She got $150 million worth of assets and it's a miracle. It's not a miracle. It's a blessing. There's a difference. A miracle is a superseding or a suspension of natural laws. This didn't supersede anything. God gave unto me through people. I have partners that have given and that made all of this happen. And I didn't just pray and God didn't just drop this money out. God didn't just tell people, give to Andrew Womack and they had never heard of me and they just supernaturally were led. I've sown into people's lives. And the scripture says that if you sow fine, uh, spiritual things, it, it's right for you to reap financial things. And so, you know, I'm ministering to millions and billions of people. We now, our networks have expanded and we got over 6 billion people per day that I could minister to. And it's not unreasonable for me to receive finances when you're sowing and touching so many people's lives. But if you're ministering to five people in a Bible study and you're believing for $40 million, you're going to need a miracle, not a blessing. <laughs> You know, I didn't think all of this stuff out. I've just been following the Lord, but God has wisdom and he's led me. And it was God's leading for me to reach as far as I possibly can. And I have gone through a lot of things to be on radio and then television. And man, I've prayed and we believed and God has given us this huge funnel that we are touching millions, billions of people's lives. And it's no big thing for us to have finances come to us. But you know, there's some people that will come to the school and they see God blessing me and they know that I'm not special and they think, well, if God did it for you, he'll do it for me. And so they go out and they just expect to get the same results that I've gotten and they haven't sown the way that I've sown. Don't ever criticize a person's harvest until you see how much seed they've sown. And that's not only talking about money, but you know, when you preach the gospel, you're sowing seed. And when you preach the gospel, you're supposed to live with the gospel. So the point that I'm trying to get across today is yes, God is the one who supplies our need, but he does it through people and he's not going to just counterfeit money. He's not just going to create it. You need to do something and ask God to bless it. You need to have a channel for God to flow through. You know, I've often thought this, that we have students that come here and they're struggling and I've often thought, why doesn't the student, you know, we've got uh, students here that uh, leave here immediately and go to work and do things like this. And man, that's just hard for them to find time to do anything. It would be great if students would volunteer, you know, I'd, I'll go get your car fixed for you. I'll take it in and you just give me 10 bucks for doing it or something like that. Or I'll go get your groceries or I'll go do this for you. And there's things that you could do. 
you could start making money. There is no shortage. You know, Ashley Teredes over here came here when he was uh, still on a green card and he couldn't work and uh, he had restrictions on him because he's English. And yet, uh, I don't know what he made, but I know that he was giving me $2,000 a month while he was here. And he was making money through the internet and through investing and doing things back in England. And there is no shortage of money. There is no shortage of anything. All you got to do is just come up with a little creative idea. There was a woman in my Bible study in Lamar, Colorado, that she struggled, had four children and Jamie and I, we were struggling at the same time, but we would give them food and help them. And this lady uh, heard me talking about these things. Set your hand unto something, do something and God will bless it. And so this woman was making clay for her kids because she didn't like the store brought clay because it, it would stick in the carpet and it was toxic. And so she came up with her own formula and made clay. And so she was cooking this clay on the stove and she was praying and saying, God, what could I do? What can I do that ha you know, could produce money? And while she was cooking this clay, the Lord spoke to her and says, take this clay, make it in different colors, roll it into deals and put it in a Ziploc bag and go to these, uh, what do you call craft fairs? And she started going. And did you know within a year or two, she had 80 people working for her producing this. She became a multimillionaire. And then the next thing she did, she took a skateboard, took the wheels off and put a bubble on the bottom. And she got on Shark Tank. And she was on there demonstrating this little thing and it was an exercise deal. And uh, she made millions off of that. She said her next royalty check could be as much as a billion dollars. A woman who was struggling and all she did was make clay and put a bubble on the bottom of a skateboard. I tell you, there are millions and millions and millions of things out there that you can make money on. Now I'm in the ministry and I may have missed it on this. I don't know. But anyway, one day I was getting up when we lived in Woodland Park and I got up early to go uh, make a fire, warm the house up. And I went out into the garage to get some wood. And when I went out there, I'd forgotten to put the garage door down and a bear had gotten in and just torn up all of our uh, trash and stuff. And I had to go clean all of that up. And I had just gone on and turned on the television so I could hear what the weather was gonna be. And there was a guy on there that I mean, looked like he didn't have uh, anything. He wasn't dressed fancy or anything, but he was talking about how he was a multimillionaire because he came up with an idea. And he says, if you write me, I'll help you come up with these creative ideas. And so I just watched that, walked out, saw that the bear had gotten into our trash. And I said, man, why doesn't somebody make a bear proof bag? Did you know if you put one drop or two drops of ammonia in a trash bag, dogs, bears will leave it alone. You can set it outside and they'll never touch it. And that's what I normally did, but I hadn't set my trash out yet. And so the bear got in. Anyway, I thought they ought to make a trash bag that has that scent in it. And it, you could call it doggone trash, ba trash bags. <laughs> These are the best doggone trash bags I've ever seen. And as soon as I thought that, I thought, man, is that a creative idea? And you know what? I talked about this on a tape and some kid in California took that idea and patented it. And I don't know if he's made any money off of it or not, but you could make money off of stuff like that. There is no shortage of money, but I'm telling you, if you're just sitting there praying and asking God to bless you and you aren't doing anything, you aren't going to prosper. If I was asking God, we need a billion dollars to finish out this building. And if I was just praying and asking God and not doing anything, that would be foolishness. That is not the way that it works. But man, I am ministering to people. I'm sowing, I'm doing things. I've got so much seed out there that it is not unreasonable for me to receive a billion dollars because I've sown that much. You start giving, you start providing a service to somebody, you start doing something to other people that is valuable to them. And I guarantee you, God will cause his rain to fall on it and it will start prospering supernaturally. But if you're just sitting there waiting to win the lottery, God's not gonna fix the lottery for you. You're not gonna win uh, good housekeeping or whatever those things are, those giveaway things. You aren't gonna win that. God's not gonna, he's not gonna, uh, fix the lottery for you. That's crooked. It's against the law. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. 
I know some of you, that's what you're doing. Jamie and I, back during our poverty days, Jamie, man, she, she believed that she was going to win that uh, publishing clearinghouse is what it was. She was going to win that. She was believing God with everything she was worth because I certainly wasn't producing. So she was believing God for that. But you know what? It never happened. God's not going to fix that for you. One out of every 32 million people is going to win something, but that's probably not going to be you. You need to start just putting some natural things to work. I just got through reading um, Jerry Falwell's autobiography. And you know, he wasn't spirit filled, but this guy started a church and knocked on a hundred doors a day for a year. And then he trained other people in his church to knock on a hundred doors a day. And I forget how many people were doing it, but did you know in one year's time they were running just under 500 people and on his one year anniversary, he was believing God to have 500 people at the one year anniversary and they had 830 something show up. And see, some people think, well, man, that was supernatural, but there was a lot of natural involved in that, knocking on doors, a hundred doors a day is a lot. And they have multiple people doing it. There was reasons that God brought those people and that people's lives were touched. Now, you don't just go out and do it all in your own flesh, but then you don't just sit there and wait on God to do it all either. There needs to be a combination of these two in everything that you do. So I just want to share that with you about prosperity, that you need to put your hand to something. You need to begin to believe God and either provide a service or a product that is going to be a blessing to other people and then ask God to bless it. And there will be supernatural increase. Amen. All right, you can pass out the offering envelopes. We're going to receive an offering this morning and give you an opportunity to give. And this is part of it. You give and God blesses it back, but you have to provide some channel for that blessing to flow through you. So you need to have a job. You need to have a product. You need to have an investment or all of the above. But you need to be doing some things in order to see God's supernatural supply come into your life. Amen. This is one reason that I'm not big on just giving money to the poor. Just, you know, just give them money. I will give them money and help them. I'll go buy them food. I'll buy them a hotel room or something like that. But just to give them money that they're just going to consume and waste and not do anything, that's rewarding negative behavior. Amen. I give a lot of money away, but I give it to people who are doing something or people who are, you know, wanting to do something, just need some help. But man, I'm, don't subsidize people's laziness. That is not a godly thing to do. Amen. Amen. So Father, we just thank you for these truths. And I'm asking you that you'd speak to people here today and that Father, they would recognize that you said that you would bless the work of our hands, that you give us power to get wealth so that we can establish your covenant here on the earth. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters that you would show them how they can go out and start giving you channels to flow finances to them. That Father, they would invest in other people's lives and do things. And we thank you, Father. I thank you for creative ideas, witty inventions, Thank you for speaking to people and just showing them, Father, what they can do. And we agree and we receive that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can receive the offering. Hey, uh, Ashley, come up here and tell them, how, how in the world did you prosper when you weren't able to work a job? Has anybody got a microphone for... Um, we got a mic here someplace. Or you could just hug me and talk to them. <laughs> But Ashley and Carly, you know, I'm on their board and man, in just a few short years, these people are prospering much, much more than I ever did back during that time. How do you prosper? Well, um, first of all, I used to give a lot, yep. praise the Lord. So um, Proverbs 11:25 says the, the um, generous soul should be made rich. So, um, you know, we used to give first. Giving was our first line of our budget. You couldn't stop us giving. But um, Proverbs 13, 4 says, a diligent soul be made rich. So I was just diligent and I just prayed in the Holy Ghost a lot and I'd have these big giving goals. And I'd say, I don't want to come down on my giving. I want to go up in my giving. So we'd do things. And I had some internet things I could do. Uh, kept my bank accounts in England to start with. And I had a different visa. I had an R1 visa. So you can't do this on a student visa, but I had an R1 visa. 
But on a student visa, there's more restrictions. And then we got our green card and was able to legally work and things like that. Then we left. We worked for you for 10 years. Um, I actually quit my salary with Andrew before I quit my job. I said, Andrew, I'm not going to rely on your money anymore. So I quit my salary. And then a few weeks later, the Lord called us to start our own ministry. And the same thing. I said, I don't want my giving to go down. I want my giving to go up. So we just believed God and um, we kept sowing the word. And it, as ministers, it's a little different because as ministers, our, our primary job is to sow the word and feed the people. Um, you know, I think it was Kenneth Copeland who said, don't look for ways to get money in as a minister. Look for ways to get the word out and the money will come. So we want to always look for ways to get the word out as ministers because that's what we live off. But as, you know, if you're a student here, you should be putting your hand to something. Be diligent. Like Andrew said, get a job, put your hand to something and God will bless the works of your hand. And that's what we found. You know, a lot of people just sit there and pray and waiting for God to rain money, but you've got to put your hand to something. Every time there's supernatural increase in the Bible, think about it, feeding the 5,000, widow woman's oil, we could go on and on. There's always a natural action before the supernatural came and blessed that. So a hundredfold of zero is zero. I got that from you. A yeah. hundredfold of zero is zero. So, so put your hand to something and believe God and God will show you. Pray in the Holy Ghost. And usually it's something pretty simple that you could overlook in the natural and say, well, that's just too simple. But that's usually God and you start acting on that. And don't despise the seed, just think, oh, that's not enough. You know, this job only pays $15 an hour, that's not enough. Or this business will only make $100 a week, that's not enough. But start there, give God something to work with and watch what happens. He'll increase it. And um, praise God, when we was at Bible school, it was first and second years, 2006. We gave more to Andrew Roman Ministries than when we was, uh, this is back in England, than when I was in full-time business, busting it, uh, really trying to work hard. I gave more money during Bible school, the, the two years of Bible school. And now we give more money in ministry than when we was in business as well, praise God. So God That's will do that for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Did you know, a lot of people think that a minister isn't working. Well, you're getting money and you aren't working. I guarantee you, the Bible says, honor those who labor in the word and in doctrine and ministry is labor. Oh, You've yeah. now been in ministry full time for how long? Well, I was a youth pastor at 18, so it's, I'm coming up for be 30 years soon. But anyway, um, this time around, leaving you working for you, it has been seven years, I guess. I think it was 2017. And is 2017. it work? It's been awesome, praise the Lord. Oh, is it work? Oh yeah, <laughs> I've got 100 planes a year, television, hours and hours of television. I, I was making television recently and I was so tired while Cardi was teaching, I fell asleep. So on, on, television? on set, the camera's on me and I fell asleep. I was so tired. So they had to keep the camera on Carly. So one of our shows has the camera on Carly for a long time before it switches back to me because I fell asleep. I was so tired. So ministry is work, definitely. W -O -R -K. I, I tell you what, travel is work. I've read some things that they say people that travel a lot, it actually takes uh, years off of your lifespan. Now I'm yeah. believing for supernatural health, but in the natural, mm -hmm. travel is hard on your oh, body. Yeah. Yep, it's hard work. You know, we go to Johannesburg, that's 16 hours on one plane. Yeah. That's hard work. I mean, one time I sat there and Carly was on one side, Hannah was on the other. They both fell asleep on me. And I was just there for like 15 hours with two people on top of me. It's all good fun. So I was on a plane where the guy next to me, he was overweight and he couldn't fit in his seat. So he was laying on top of me, passing gas for 11 hours. <laughs> and then he fell asleep and put his head on my shoulder. Oh. Did he dribble on you, no? <laughs> no, he didn't dribble on me. That's the only thing, I think. But That's awesome. I'll tell you what, this travel is awesome. It's oh, yeah. so much fun. Come on. So, can I invite him next week? Huh? Can I invite him to come out next oh, week? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing a conference here next week yep. with Ashley. Yep, just uh, myself, Carly, and Andrew. So come out next week. You're all invited. Praise the Lord. I'll even pay your, your way here because it's free. It's a free conference. <laughs> it's uh, Thursday. Is that April the 25th, honey? April the 25th, Thursday night. Friday night and Saturday morning, and it's gonna be myself, Carly, and Andrew. Thursday night, Carly's gonna speak, and we see miracles every time we have conferences. You'll see miracles right here. Amen. The other day, we was in England, preaching at Caris, I didn't tell you this, and a twin, elderly twins, and one of them jumped out of the wheelchair and ran up and down, we got it on video, Praise ran up and down the stage, and his brother was just weeping, it was so sweet. And he was healed of a brain tumor, just ran up and down the stage. So Praise the Lord. anyway, you'll see miracles Thursday night, that's Thursday coming, just um, a week away. And then um, Andrew's gonna be speaking Friday night, and then Saturday we're gonna have a combination, and we're gonna have a panel and everything else. So it's called The Cure. Go to terridas.com to register. You're all invited. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Ashley. Appreciate it. Praise the Lord. And if we had time, I'm sure there's hundreds of people in here that could testify about how God has put his super on your natural but you know, you just got to do some things and believe God. And if you'll do that, and if you will spend less than you make and do that for a long period of time, I guarantee you, you'll be rich. That's a, a foolproof formula right there. Amen. All right. So thank you for your offering. God bless you. I'm going to let you go 10 seconds early. All right.